the morning starts with an interesting operation I'm trying to get Dotty up here to where the ground is flatter over a piece of plastic and then I can jack it up real high clean off the underside and start painting it um, so I've hooked up some cables to my tow bar and I'm just dragging it up but I have to keep repositioning the mat because I don't quite know where I want it and of course steering it without a steering wheel by myself Ugh. so uh, yeah little steps and we'll get there we've got most of it on but I think I'm there's a little bit shy on the plastic so I'll just have to re-mask as I move forward lame another thing I just wanted to point out before you continue to cast aspersions the comments about um, stockings they're not they're just the insides of my rather shite burnt through tracksuit bottoms which I use because I hate wearing overalls so yeah just to reassure you I'm not deeply confused about my gender I don't identify as something bizarre or dress up like a lady and um, so I know that will disappoint a few of you but um, that's what it is I'm gonna go find some tools and um, begin my assault on the underside of the car well lots of faffing later we have a jacked up dotty got wheels under the front and I've got weird kind of I don't know what you call them things under the back under here <coughs> can have our first look at what needs to be done basically my plan for today is to clean off the underside of this car I'm not going mental I'm not going up into this area because it's all original it's still got its original like grease grime and stone chipping stuff on it so I'm just gonna clean up all the bits I did paint it all with black Jotun that's the other side I never got an opportunity to clean it up properly or to put red oxide on it but it hasn't even flash rusted so that's excellent news so I'm just gonna do the horrible job of um, cleaning it up then there will be a few worlds like those that just need to be knit back key it properly and degrease it and then I could put the Jotun on <sighs> oh, I'm not looking forward to today it's gonna be really unpleasant I had an option not to show you this um, because it's really aggravating <clears throat> and there was another number of options of how to go about fixing it basically when I started cleaning up the underside of the car I found more rust basically this end of the chassis rail from above looked absolutely perfect but when I started cleaning it up I found some rust so I picked a bit more and found that basically that area was made up of filler and I couldn't tell from above because it just looked like I don't know old metal and I hit it and it was fine but by the time I'd put my wire brush through it it started making holes so I'm in the process of repairing that bit now which is really annoying because I've cut my patch I need to find all the metals pushed up there and there was a big chunk of filler in it so I'm gonna have to beat that down um, that's all good metal it's just deformed slightly I think what's happened is somebody's put a jack on it bent it and then um, not done a very good job of repairing it which is annoying but anyway so I'm gonna do a quick and dirty patch in there and then continue with my cleanup procedures I could have just put more filler in but it's not really a way to do these things today just keeps getting better I'll show you what I thought was going on basically at the rear mid section of the sill there should be a drain hole here on the other side of the car that was kind of half filled in and I thought oh well crap's just fallen in there and then when it's been stone chipped it's kind of half blocked up the hole so I thought I know I'll poke it and I'll remake that hole nicely jobs are good and Bob's your uncle I'll carry on that isn't quite what's happened and again this is I, I could have lied I could have bullshitted I could have not shown any of this 
on the videos but I don't do that I show you what goes on in the real world basically at the bottom of the B pillar which is here water can run in and there's a bowl in the bottom which is that bit which is uh, the really strong bit where the seat belt anchor and reel is don't worry about that bit because that is just cavity wax you can scrape all that off um, but basically it's a great place for water to sit that is all can you see how it's smearing that is just really old cavity wax and it's all good metal behind so that's really good news this seam can you see there where that line is that's like one of the rear ends of the rear inner sill coming down and then that's good metal behind there just some pitting corrosion but in order to get to all of that i had to cut the outer skin of the sill off which really fucks me off because you know it was all nicely stone chipped and looked beautiful but if i hadn't addressed it it would have rotted out and my mate would have had a car which he's paying you know he's not paying market value obviously but he's paying a lot of his money for something that could have gone wrong so it really pisses me off i just wanted a nice happy day i wasn't even going to look forward to today cleaning all the underside of this bloody car off but now i've got to get my wire brushy thing in fact i'll show you that well i will have shown you that but my drill has just broken so today is just getting better and better but basically some utter dickhead has filled in that hole with a plug the drain hole and then filled it so you've got good metal here that is all nice metal it's a bit pitted but it's good i need to drill that out check for more rust in this whole area because it looked i mean it is good actually you can hear it's good but it's just really fucking me off. Right, I'm gonna go find another drill if I've got one, clean that up, drill that hole out, fix it all. Cock. Well, as frustrating as this has been, I'm quite relieved because I've sounded off forward and rearward of that, and there's no sign of any rust and up in there. That is all still just cavity wax. So that is good news, happy. So I'm going to go get some Hydrate 80, flood that bit, the inside of that bit, then make my patches, weld it up, and then hopefully I can just carry on again. It's not that big a deal, because I had to like redo that bit with underseal anyway, so a little bit more under here is no big deal. It should be able to be an invisible repair, and that's just the way it goes. Right, patch is made. <clears throat> I'm really not looking forward to welding this because there's so much cavity wax in there that it's just going to dribble through but we will persevere incidentally that plug thing I think that might be an original Z-Bar metal pin plug thing so it's possible that it's not for drainage it's from cavity wax injection so maybe i was being a bit harsh on whoever and then it might be the one on the other side just happens to be missing um anyway i've got my thing where's my magnet called it's my magnet so that will go in there like so it does fit honest i just need to wrangle it into position uh Quite handily now having cut two big holes in the car I've got somewhere to clip my earth for my welder so I will try and put the camera somewhere where you can see me welding because I know people find that helpful it's quite windy today so I'm hoping that all my shielding gas doesn't just get blown away Hopefully you can see what's going on. I've just tacked it in a few places. It's a little bit low down here. 
So I've tacked it there and there and I'll just tap that bit up. Like so. Looking pretty good. I'm going to concentrate on welding this bit first because as the cavity wax melts that's where it's going to want to pull. So if I do that bit first I should be able to get away with the other bits afterwards. And again improvised camera mount. Just for interest you are now sitting on top of my extension reel. You can actually hear it boiling. It makes a distinctive smell too. You'll notice that I'm doing a butt weld and I've left it quite gappy in a number of places so that I can guarantee I've got penetration because I want to grind this pretty much smooth afterwards so it's an invisible repair. I'm just building it up with quite heavy tacks. That one really farted out a big gaseous bubble of turdiness. Uh, so we'll have to concentrate on that bit afterwards. Sometimes when you see the gas bubbles developing, you can kind of weld back into it and try and burn them away. Like that one. So when that's ground smooth I know that's good metal in there. solid Okay, that's about done. Um, that'll all grind smooth and I'll be happy with it, I'm sure. So, job to good. Gonna put patching over there now and then grind all smooth. Okay, that's welded in. That's all nice and smooth. Patches in, all nice and smooth. It's not mega smooth because I don't really care. But I'm gonna go and have some lunch now. Well, I'm not actually sure what I'm looking like at the minute because I haven't got a viewfinder. <laughs> but judging by the floor, probably pretty disgusting. I have just finished taking all the crappy old burnt paint off the underside of the car. And um, it's all looking pretty, pretty healthy. There are some bits up there which are a struggle to get to with the exhaust in. But I did manage to poke the drill through up that hole and got to them so that's all good now you might think just degrease and paint but unfortunately the paint i'm using is um it's very good paint but it does need a key so where i've been polishing stuff with the wire wheel and the drill the paint would probably just end up even if i degreased it delaminating off that so i've got to do now is key everything that's annoying because I can't use the drill because I don't want to polish the metal. I actually want it sanded and abraded. So I'm going to have to go and do it manually by hand, the whole of the underside of the car. So I'll have to go and find some really rough sandpaper and some cloths, and then I can sand it and um, degrease it. And then we should be good to go. I shan't be filming this. 
because it's boring but what I have is 120 grit rough paper rags panel wipe so I'm gonna get under there I have just swept it up a bit it's a pretty horrible job but someone's got to do it looks like it's gonna be me time for another quick tour <clears throat> so that's what we have now all sanded and keyed we've been around with a hammer and I've closed up some of the seams um, I'm not going mental because it's all going to get seam seeded anyway afterwards so I'm going to degrease it now and then um, get my mixture of paint and then um, shove it on there and then hopefully we'll have a rust free car for many years to come <laughs> right this is the paint I'm using it's Jotun Jotomastic 87 my mate Ted, who quite often posts up, tells me that they don't make this anymore. Um, well, they don't make the 87, they've replaced it with, I think it's number 90. But basically, it'll be the same, if not slightly improved. And it comes in two parts. The big black drum of doom. Uh, and then the hardener, so you have to mix it up. Um, I, I think... That you can download the data sheet off the internet but for different temperatures it gives different mixing ratios but it's basically for me today six to one so six parts black doom one part happy hardener um, i usually go slightly above if i'm in any doubt which is why i usually run out of the hardener before i run out of the black stuff but um, what you do is you mix it up and then you leave it for 10 minutes before you actually start painting it. And then somewhere over here, I bought myself a pack of disposable brushes, which I've buried somewhere. But um, yeah, I'll go find some gloves, let that go off and get ready to paint. You can spray it, but it's meant for the marine industry where they use airless spraying. So you have no air coming out with it. You just have that stuff. It's actually for the bottom of ships and oil rigs but it's really good at going over rust, killing rust, and basically being a badass on the underside of a car. It's probably overkill for a car, but whatever works, works. I've got it all over the underside of the police car and then stone chip on top, and that's still perfect. So yeah, it's good stuff. I think I'm about good to go. Got my packet of brushes which came from B&M Home Stores for not a lot of money. I've got my pot of paint, which is sort of going off, and now it's time to actually start painting stuff. So uh, I don't know whether this is going to be enough to do the whole of the underside, but we shall see. It is nice paint. It really could do with two coats. My plan is to do one and then see how it works out. Um, it might be that one thick coat will be enough, I don't know, I just have to sort of play it by ear. What's slightly more worrying is it's getting cloudy and dark and it was supposed to stay sunny all day. Oh, big fucking buzzard. That's pretty cool. Two of them. Let's hope they don't shit on the car. Or me, three of them. What's going on? Hope they're not vultures. Oh well, right, uh, less chat, more paint. Thought I'd stop to just show you this bit, just masked up around that wheel arch lip, which allowed me to really get into the back side. Done down in there, and then I've been working my way along the floor. Done that drain plug area, because I want that really well protected. Um, but yeah, kind of like just wanted to stop and reflect really, because this project has been a lot longer, a lot harder, and a lot more involved than I kind of really wanted or needed it to be. Because rather than it being just thrown together, it's become a bit more of a restoration than I wanted. But the benefit of doing all the hard work is you get to do this and start to see it all take in shape. And you might think that would have been the nice bit on the top of the car and that all got painted green and it was but for me it's these bits that are more satisfying because these are the bits that were really really nasty and you can see just what a difference it's made to the underside of the car 
Well, now that all of this is being painted black, it just looks really nice and it's all coming together. So, um, you might notice me really pu pushing this on and pushing it into the seams, that's kind of the point. There's no point just having it on the surface, it's got to go into the seams so that they can't blow apart again. Um, but yeah. I also like the fact that I was managed to manage to get a hold of that cabin floor for under quid because although you don't need these drain plug things, if anyone ever jump jacks the car up, it just looks so much more original that it's got its original sort of big drain plug things in it. That bit paint pot lids as I sometimes call them. Um, anyway, less chatting. Again more painting. Still got quite a lot of paint in there, hasn't gone off yet, so I'll carry on. Right, first pot emptied and my brush has started to get digested by whatever chemicals are in here. I've done from the front all the way along this side. Oh, put a bit in there, needs gobbin. I'll just turn you off, no I didn't. Right, good. Basically done all the way through up over the back of where the rear axle well doesn't doesn't go right up there but my patch to here in and around here all the way along and I'm just while the paint is starting to go hard stippling it because this paint is a bit like any of the other epoxies and um poor 15 is a good example they are a bit of a twat to overcoat you either have to do it within 48 hours of this stuff going on or you have to then re-key it so what I'm doing is just stippling it so hopefully I'll be overcoating this soon but if I don't it's a little bit of a mechanical key without me having to go stupid and sand the whole bottom of the car again which I really don't want to have to do it also will help to build up an effect of um, like under seal and stone chip because the stone chip I've got you can spray it and that would be the ideal thing to do but because the top of the car is now green and I want it to stay green and not go black I want to oh I'll probably have to roll or brush paint the stone chip on so if I get this coat looking already a little bit lumpy the ones that go on afterwards will continue to look lumpy and it should all tie in together and look factory well not factory but you know it will look like somebody did their best and that's what you can that's all you can do really in that but it's satisfying to do and knowing that as close as i can get it there's no rust uh, incidentally, you know that hole I repaired on the other side of the car? That's what it should look like. While this side's going off, I can go mix up another pot. It's quite cool where I joined that because that is the original body line join and that's the one I put in and because they're both on the same angle kind of looks factory even though it's not right Ugh. oh yeah and I did the leading edge of that wing because it was green and it should be black so I've just done it in black this stuff it looks shiny now but it will go off a slightly off grey colour so it should tie in quite nicely and should all look pretty much the same cool okie dokie I've now mixed up pot number two I've also masked up um, some of the other wheel arch lips so that I can get in nice you might think well why doesn't you just take the wheel off I probably should have done but I can't be bothered and now it's on them I've got enough access to do what I need to do so I shall just do that. Well that is the end of a long day's bodging done in and around the weird arches um, and then under here oh, 
that's the bit that I welded up earlier today with a stippled finish there's no filler in that and it actually looks pretty good same with the bit at the front there you can kind of tell there's a patch but meh by the time it's got some road dirt on it it'll be fine I need to go around and get rid of some of these little marks I've left um, but yeah really happy with that I'm gonna wait for that to go off then I can seam seal it where I need to again not going crazy because I've poked this epoxy into as many areas as I can get so yeah that will go off I'll seam seal it I might do a couple of thicker coats in a couple of key areas and then I'll under seal the underside then I'll put it on the axle stands get the wheels off and like do the wheel well areas but yeah that's been quite a lot of work um, but it's all worth it oh yeah incidentally I did whack a whole load in that rear seam all the way along to try and preserve that um, I have spotted one really annoying thing when this went to the body shop and was seam sealed they didn't put enough in there so I'm gonna have to seam that again um, and then paint it brush paint it green I've got green paint left but it's just another thing to do. Anyway, see you later.